Before we begin this video, I just want to take a quick moment and request you, our viewers, to subscribe to The Print. As you know, we have young reporters who go out all over the country reporting on different areas and fields way beyond science, health and environment. We are able to do this only because of support from people such as yourselves. So please do follow the link below in the description to subscribe to The Print. And now on to the video. Tibet. It's right here. It's so close to India. And this Himalayan region with all its eyes is often called the third pole of the world. The Himalayas and the Tibetan region is also historically significant anthropologically. We know that human ancestors have lived here and we know that animals have lived here as well since time immemorial. As animals have lived and died in this region, in the snow, they have been frozen over. And in ice, we know things are preserved. This includes the preservation of corpses of animals. A team of researchers took a sample of some melting ice from Tibetan Plateau, an ice core sample, and what they discovered here blew their minds. They found over 1,700 species of ancient different viruses in the ice core, including one that goes back all the way to 41,000 years ago before Homo sapiens were Homo sapiens in this region. All these viruses are buried in ice and we know that viruses come alive only when they are inside a host. Until then, they lie outside just waiting and in these cores, in the ice samples, they have lied for thousands of years just waiting. And now we have a big problem. Ice all over the world is melting. The research team here is based out of the Ice Core Paleoclimatology Group in the Ohio State University. They went to the Gulia Glacier in the Tibetan Plateau and took some ice core samples. Here they used DNA genomic research and collected genomes of everything they found within these core samples and they were then able to recreate viral genomes the way the viruses existed and thrived all those thousands of years ago. They found a total of 1705, 1705 different species of ancient viruses and all of these viruses or virions were well preserved in the ice. About only a quarter of these were even similar to the ones found in global data sets today. So these viruses are ancient ancient and a lot of them were in fact local just to the Tibetan Plateau region and they subsequently got buried under the ice right there. Now, we all know that ice is melting all over the world. The world is increasingly warming and we are losing all of our sea ice. The sea ice in the Arctic, the land ice in Antarctica and all of these glaciers like Himalayas, the Greenland glacier, these huge tall mountain ranges, ice sheets, they are all going. And there is no stopping this. It is already too late. All this ice all over the world is definitely melting within the next few years. But all this melting ice will then start to reveal and expose everything it's hidden, including the release of all these viruses that it harbors directly into the natural environment. These include ancient viruses that we have never been infected with before or have infected anything in this timeline. But this video is not about that. Here, Scientists go one step further in the study and try to figure out how these deadly viruses adapted to changing global temperatures and environment conditions on such a large scale to thrive all of these years and then subsequently be able to still infect hosts. These viruses survived through the earth switching between being a hot ball of like water and snowball earth over thousands and thousands of years. So what exactly did the scientists find from all of this genomic analysis? So first things first about these samples of viruses that they discovered, there were 1705 species of viruses and these were spread out across nine distinct time intervals. These time intervals are separated by large gaps and these span periods of warm to cold or cold to warm cycles in the earth as well. As a result, the genetic sequences that the researchers are studying give clues into how these viruses altered themselves genetically or 
and or altered the host they infect to be able to survive and spread when they were active in the atmosphere and the elements. So what did they discover? First is what we said earlier. They found that only a quarter of the viruses that they discovered shared similarities with any existing viruses in the medical genomic datasets today. This not only highlights the lack of data from ICE scores about viruses, but also highlights how distinct these viruses are. Second, they saw that many viruses here were of a distinct species but had substantial overlap with some other species, indicating that several of them had been local just to the region. They were local here, they infected here and they subsequently got buried just here without spreading to the rest of the world. After this come the larger findings. The team, remember, has been studying the genomic sequences of all of these viruses and they found that the viral communities or groups of viruses varied greatly genetically when it came to the ones that were active during cold periods of the Earth's climate versus the ones who were active during warm climatic periods. So they had two distinct genetic mechanisms and genetic data. The largest group and the most distinct community in the ice core sample arrived in the region and was active about 11,500 years ago. We're talking about viruses that used to infect living beings over 11,000 years ago. This was the time period when the earth was moving from the last ice age into what it is today, a much more warmer environmental condition. Such large-scale weather patterns and climatic patterns with melting of huge glaciers resulting in changing climate and changing winds take place over several years and decades and hundreds of years in fact. So winds at this time when these viruses were active and infecting began to blow in as the earth warmed and all the ice started melting. This, the arrival of new kinds of viruses into this region led to selection pressure or genetic pressure that forces a certain organism to evolve a certain way which can then be traced genetically. This trace is what these researchers are seeing in these ice core sequences. So to understand how these viruses changed, what the authors did was they attempted to study how these cold viruses and warm viruses interacted with their ancient hosts and how that in turn helped them survive. For this purpose, they collected a lot of data of genomes of other microbes that are extant in this region or present right now in this region in the environment. And then they used detailed computer models to compare how these ancient viruses changed and how they compare to the ones that exist today, as well as comparisons between the sequences in the score sample itself. So what they found was that consistently an interesting thing kept popping up. All of these viruses kept infecting one particular family of bacteria called the Flavobacterium family. Flavobacterium is a genus and it consists of distinct, hundreds of distinct species of bacteria and these are present all over the world. Here they are present in the glaciers and in general they are present across multiple habitats such as ice of course and soil and water and in fact fresh water and seawater and damp land regions. They are also present in the food we consume. The primary purpose is that they are responsible for decomposition and breaking down larger organic matter into smaller bits, whether these are animals or plants. So in the environment, they play a very critical role. They are very, very useful to the environment and are a necessary family of bacteria with hundreds of species that break down and decompose everything. But they also infect. They cause waterborne diseases, whether it is in humans or animals or even in fish. They are found in rotten food and dairy products and consuming the more dangerous versions, especially among neonates or newborn babies, can result in harmful conditions and dangerous ones like pneumonia and meningitis. And there's a whole other problem too because the flavobacteria family of bacteria, all these different species are increasingly becoming resistant to antibiotics. AMR or antimicrobial resistance is another growing issue in the medical community and we've talked about it before. We'll talk about it definitely again later, but not right now. Now what the scientists have learned from these ice core samples is that all of these viruses consistently infect this particular family of bacteria. So this gives the researchers a unique ability to compare the genome of the bacteria and the virus too. So what the team decided to do was to study exactly what these viruses do at a genetic level to these bacteria once these viruses enter inside the bacteria. Now remember a virus is about at least a hundred times smaller than a bacterium. So 
they make genetic changes once they climb within these bacteria. So what the Gullia glacier viruses do is they infect bacteria and by extension other hosts like larger animals and even humans. And they quote unquote steal genes. They affect the host to cause genetic modifications within their own bodies. When the team studied the viral genomes, they found auxiliary genes, which are genes that are not related genetically to the virus's inherent structure itself in it, but come from outside sources. These genes help in metabolic processes. They help break down larger compounds like vitamins and carbohydrates and thus offer a lot of survival benefits to the virus. And what's more, these auxiliary genes from other species are found in all viral samples from all nine major climate ages going back to over 40,000 years. And here is where the most important finding from the study is that can be extrapolated to all viruses today. These viruses are not alive like life is thought to be alive outside of hosts. They can only multiply, i.e. reproduce, when they are inside of hosts that they infect. But they also do need to cope with harsher environmental conditions. Virus is affected by temperature. That's why viruses in food get killed when cooked and viruses in our bodies get eventually killed when we develop a fever. So what happens when the environment itself starts cooking these viruses, when it becomes too warm for them or starts freezing them when it becomes too cold for survival? Turns out that these virions, individual viruses, are so tiny, they can just borrow genes from the host they infect into themselves, helping make themselves hardier and more survivable to harsher conditions. These borrowed genes contribute to viral fitness, enabling the species to further infect and multiply in these conditions. But this also affects the host. So these viruses not only kill the cells that they infect, they also manipulate the host fitness by manipulating the host DNA. And they either help or prevent their host from surviving in extreme conditions. This in turn, in such icy environments and harmful conditions, help themselves survive without a host. To be honest, these findings are quite niche. What have we got to do with it? Well, Understanding how these ancient viruses responded to changes in climate in the past that to at such a large scale and how they adapted to survive helps us understand better how they survive and infect today and by extension how to treat when we are infected with them. Mainly though, these findings also glaringly highlight our lack of data from virus genomes from ancient ice cores. The authors also highlight this. Ice cores contain a wealth of information about the past life, past climate, and the past world in general. And they are one of the biggest resources of this information that are actively getting melted away right in front of our eyes. We are losing this very rich database. The study highlights just how much scientists still have to uncover about the past world from ice samples and in turn, how much we can know about our own future from our past that is recorded away in ice all across the world.